04, and then you come back in 05 and have mechanicals. And I mean, how much pressure is there as a defending champion? Are there a lot more obligations in Kona and for sponsors when you're coming into that race as a defending champion? Not in Kona, but before. You know, you have so many appointments before over the year. Yeah. So you forget to train. You, you not you don't forget it, but you know you say, oh, I better go there for a signing right. and make some bucks or yeah, s sponsor point. Take care of your sponsor. Uh, photo shooting here, photo shooting there, and uh, at the end it's maybe ten, fifteen days you you lost somewhere, and uh, going into Kona for sure it's a lot of pressure. I, I go there to win, and a right. uh, lot of talking before, and uh, some people talk more some less and you know it's it's uh, it's it's not easy and I, s I know that Chris McCormick will feel it this year too right and it's so hard to defend the title and win again in the s in the same year you know and uh, but you know it's it's our job and uh, we sure. have to handle it and we have to to learn how to work with the media and with the sponsor sometimes you have to say no and uh, that's what I did here in, in this year. I the German media asked for a sh uh, TV shooting three days before the race. And I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> you're kidding. <laughs> so, so and I said, no. So I have no big media in Germany before the race, but I hope I will have it after. That's sort of a Dave Scott thing. Dave wouldn't do anything before the race, figuring if I win, then they'll, they'll all be wanting me anyways. Uh, last year, going into that race, uh, obviously based on the marathon you ran about a month later, a few weeks later, you were in pretty phenomenal shape going into that race. When did you start feeling sick a couple days beforehand or was this something that just came on that, that morning? Uh, the night before, really. Uh, I woke up and I had stomach problems and I went to the toilet and then I wasn't sleeping for one, one, one minute. Uh, I was throwing up and... Yeah, okay. the rest. <laughs> <laughs> We're guessing. So everything was, I was empty yeah. by the by morning and I couldn't have breakfast and I throw up again at the pier and uh, then I got the news that uh, Ferris Al Sultan was yeah. lying in his car and looking dead. <laughs> so, and I thought, okay, something happened and uh, after the race I had so many problems with the athletes, the stomach problems and uh, so, yeah, that's how it started night before the race and uh, I tried to, to, to finish the race or to be part of the right. race because uh, you know we have uh, our investment bank is sure. pushing a lot of money in our sport and uh, I had a really bad Frankfurt that year and uh, I thought okay I try to give everything and uh, after I think 80 kilometers I stopped and I lost uh, from the swim to the the stop I lost four and a half kilos so nearly 10 pounds 10 pounds and basically I was throwing up 10 pounds and you could see it on TV <laughs> 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 that, was, that was funny yeah yeah it was funny and not not for you but yeah um, it, let's go back to 06 I think it's one of the classic races in Ironman history just because you know your uh, uh, fifth fastest winning time in history Great swim. You, I think you surprised everybody because you're right up there in the swim. Uh, new bike course record, 418, 255 marathon, 811, 56. And you s even with that great time, you know, you, you're, you have a guy coming at you <laughs> the, whole, the whole time. And you knew you were having a great race. When you, but when you were up there, everybody talks about the great bike ride you had. And everybody talks about the great run. But your swim, I just remember to look on people's faces, how quickly you caught them in the swim, I mean, in the, uh, in the bike ride. And at that point, I think people were just freaked out. Did you sense that when you caught people very early in that bike ride? Uh, I had good, good conditions in the water. We had a strong current going back, and I like that. I like rough conditions. And uh, I catch a good group, and I saw a group going left, going to uh, the first stretch, and I... I decided to go with the group on the right hand side and uh, that was a better decision. Right. So the left one was going a little bit longer and uh, had the right group and I uh, was swimming with the lead peg and I was surprised seeing Ferris next to me and all those really fast guys in the water. And I was lucky. Uh, had the luckiest day I think in triathlon for me in swimming. Right. So and I was first going up Palani Road on the bike and uh, that was amazing. <laughs> uh, but uh, then I thought, oh my God, now we have to lead 180 kilometers. Right. 
and it's really tough pushing 180 kilometers. So I'm, I'm used to have, you know, see the guys in front of me and, and not eat them, but uh, catch them and the next one and the next one. That's much easier for me, but um, I think it was uh, Lieto. Right. He asked me to, uh, he asked me, do you start pushing now or do you wait a little bit? And I said, I start now. And so and he said, no, I can't come with you now. <laughs> You're on your own. So I was leading for 180 kilometers and I had no idea how far they're behind. Uh. And uh, I had a great day. I had not 17 minutes or 20 minutes lead. I had, I think, 10 or 11. Right. And uh, I knew that McCormick was talking before I give him 10 minutes and I catch him. Yes. So he didn't catch me. <laughs> no, he did Seven not. 70 seconds behind me and I was giving 100%. I think he was giving 110%. And uh, I was lucky. I finished first and he had a, a phenomenal race. And uh, I read the interview at Slow Twitch and he said it was his best race ever. Right. And that's it's an honor. To Absolutely. To read that from uh, Chris McCormick and he changed a lot from last year to this year <laughs> in talking right well, that was a <laughs> <laughs> speaking of talking after that race obviously that's when everything started we were there at the the party that evening and I stand with McCormick and somebody handed him a Blackberry and it was a interview with Norman Stadler that said Chris McCormick was cheating on the bike or something along that line and that's where it all started, which was actually one of the best things that happened in the sport. There was a lot of, that was a full year. For me, it was great. <laughs> For me, it was wonderful. Thank you. It was, it was really nice of you guys. I thought we were going to have a brawl right there. I was, I was pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly did you mean to say in that interview? I mean, did it come across the way, were you misquoted? Did you feel like y that Chris actually was sitting on a bike? I mean, you were so far ahead. You know, I was really pissed after the the media, the press conference, he was sitting next to me and yeah. he said, I'm the best athlete in the world and I just won. So I said, what's what's wrong here? And so I was, I was a little, you know, angry and sure. then he said, I'm the best runner in the world and next to him was, I uh, think, Rutger Beke who had a faster run split and yeah. Sergio Marquez had a better run split. So he's not the best runner in the... Right. So I, I was a little bit angry and then I started, okay, he was drafting, but I had no idea. The only in information I got was from Ferris on Ferris. the run course. He was yelling at me, uh, kick his butt. Uh, he was cheating. He was sitting next to me all the day behind me. And I said, okay, I try. And uh, then I saw the data on, I think, uh, performance peaks or whatever, yeah. the, the SRM data. And I saw that he had 30 wattage less than Ferris. And Ferris was in the front. And McCormick was second or in the group or third. Right. So he was not... He was Wasn't racing by the rules, right. but for me, that's cheating. Uh, that's sort of a, a, a the way the Germans race, and I, don't, I hate to typecast, but the reality is, going back to Wolfgang Dietrich and Jürgen Zach and yourself, the German and Thomas Hellriegel, German athletes go off the front of the bike. It's just sort of the, w the way it is. So yeah, For me, it's, it's much more difficult to, to race in the group because you're always scared to get a red card or yellow card. And right. 10 meters or 7 meters and you're, you say, say four bike lengths and you, you count four bike lengths and uh, we had staggering rule and, and it's, 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 yeah. yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, needless to say, you'd rather be off the front. It's, it's easier for me. I was lucky to have the staggering rule because all those guys were watching each other if they ride this, the good position or if they're in the 10 meters or 7 meters. So, it's it's so nervous, and uh, yeah. some guys they get a card for for nothing. They get they 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 you have to pass in fifteen seconds, it's and you don't count if you're in the Ironman or fifteen seconds, or if it's thirteen or twelve, <laughs> or seventeen or eighteen, they get a card. 